Okay, so I'm going to uh, explain a few features of the Pro 5 oxygen concentrator. Um, this one's been running for a while. Um, so on the back side is uh, an air inlet. Uh, inside there's a fan that draws air into the bot, no, into the top here, blows the heated air out. There's a air compressor inside that requires cooling. So this filter here is cleaning out uh, dust and so on in the air that needs to be changed from time to time depends on the conditions if you push those little tabs down uh, This filter will come out. It's one that's Designed to you can shake it outside or somewhere to shake the dust off, but then you can wash it and uh, return it back um, Once it's once it's dry you can use it again. It's another finer mesh filter uh, that pulls out. Uh, there's got replacement filters available for that. Put the filter in and it it's, uh, just pushes back on the fitting. So we'll put this back together. It just sets in there. Clip on the bottom and it snaps back in. That, uh, if you don't change that, uh, you get more restriction, you don't get as much cooling, the motor overheats, um, so you want to keep that cleaned out. So I've got the, the unit plugged in. Um, on the top here, well, this is where your oxygen is going to come out. This uh, little fitting is an adapter, it threads on to the stainless steel fitting here, but this is often more useful for hooking it up to different applications. Um, so you want to make sure that that's turned on uh, finger tight. Then you have a dial that can, uh, is used to adjust the flow of the oxygen coming from the unit. At its lowest setting, uh, it's at 0.125, and that's measured in liters per minute. And uh, it's got, uh, I think, 10 different settings, a uh, quarter of a liter, half a liter, one all the way up to five liters a minute. I'm gonna demonstrate uh, with a flow meter here what that actually looks like. But uh, before I do that, you turn the unit on, this little green light will flash for, I think, about 30 seconds. Uh, that's indicating, uh, that's used to measure the concentration of the oxygen. And when it first starts, the concentration, it, it takes a little time for it to build. Uh, so it gives a little bit of time uh, when it's flashing. It's, it's, it's just waiting for that 30 seconds. Once that 30 seconds is reached and the oxygen purity is good, uh, the green light will be solid. If your oxygen purity is not up to at least 85%, I believe, uh, then this will give you an alarm and uh, some orange light will come on. And that's usually indicating either you know, a hose has come loose inside or a worst case scenario, you know, it's just been used so many hours that the sieve bed is worn out. Uh, if it's used in a humid environment, that sieve bed is going to be contaminated more quickly and uh, may need to be replaced. So right now I have it set at the, the lowest setting and I'm going to hook up a flow meter. Uh, right now I've, so I've got a flow meter here that measures from one to five liters per minute. Okay, so I've got, this is a quarter inch tubing, uh, inside diameter tubing. It's uh, flexiline. It's uh, three-eighths outside diameter. This is a tubing that's compatible with oxygen. We use it for all of our oxygen uh, needs. Um, and it works good uh, for most applications here. So I've got this hooked up and you'll see it doesn't really even register on this flow meter. Uh, the flow meter, the more gas that flows through, the higher it pushes the little ball. Um, but at this the other end, I've got a diffuser and a jug of water, so you can see uh, the bubbles coming up, so we know that there is some flow coming out, but it's just really too low to register uh, this flow meter. If I turn this up to a quarter liter a minute, uh, it starts to jump off the bottom just a little. Half a liter a minute, 
They were reading about a half liter and turned to one. It's actually reading just slightly above and that is to give you just a little bit of uh, room for some back pressure. Um, in most applications you've got just a little bit of back pressure. And I'll show you a video too what happens if you have uh, too much back pressure that's going to restrict your flow. Um, but for most purposes it's going to be reading just a, a slightly higher than what this dial says. So there's one and a half and two, two and a half, three liters a minute. The deeper my diffuser is down in the in the water, uh, the closer it gets to the actual flow. Three and a half, this is four, one and a half and five. And you can see we got a lot of bubbles in our, our bubble diffuser at that flow rate. Okay, I'm going to show you a few things what happens uh, when you put some back pressure on there. To do that, I got to hook up a, a few more things here. Just going to get those hooked up. So I have things set up here. Uh, this is dialed in to five liters a minute. And on these flow meters, one of them goes from zero to ten, the other from zero to five. And they're showing about four liters a minute. And that's because I've got one PSI of back pressure. Uh, indicated on this gauge here. So it doesn't take a whole lot of pressure and your, your flow rate is going to be reduced. Uh, in the jug here, it's hard to tell, uh, but we know we get flow through there. I'm going to turn this down a little bit so that I'm restricting it further. So now I'm just a little over 3 psi and uh, my dial on the Pro 5 is still set to 5 liters a minute, but with uh, 3.5, 4 psi of back pressure, uh, that's limiting my oxygen flow to actually 3 liters a minute. So that gives you an idea then. Uh, I can bring it down to so what I've got up to 5. PSI of back pressure. Now my flow is restricted to about two liters per minute. Okay, so it's important to understand uh, if you're providing some back pressure, if there's too much back pressure, you basically go down to zero flow. Uh, there's just a little bit getting through. This is about the maximum pressure that I can get out of this Pro 5. They're totally closed off and just about seven PSI.